Alright, so I know I've been hyping this bike for a very long time now and I know I've also been delayed a couple of times on posting but now, it's finally here and yes, it's the 800MT by CF Moto. <laughs> So before we talk about anything else, let's first address the elephant in the room. And yes, this is a KTM engine, the exact same engine that you'd find on their 790 lineup. Like the Duke 790, but more specifically, the 790 Adventure. But although they're identical in both shape and size, there are still some slightly different tuning that's going on with this CF Moto engine. So for starters, this is still a 799cc engine and it even sounds and performs almost as wild as the KTMs. So you'd ask, what's the difference between this 800MT engine versus the 790 Adventure engine? Well, I can't really tell the difference. They both sound the same. They perform almost the same, at least when I tried it. But the big question is, why does this bike cost a fortune less than the 790 Adventure? Adventure. And that's what you're gonna find out later. Alright, so for starters, this bike comes in two variants and two colors. So what we have here is the sports variant. And the only way that you can tell the difference is by the wheels and the spoke rims. This sport variant comes with a five spoke alloy wheels and some rubber slicks for the road. While the touring version comes with spoke tires and some dual sport rubbers. And also the touring version comes with a quick shifter. Okay, so looks-wise, CF Moto nailed it on this one. It's not too overly styled, and it's also not too normal looking like most ADVs. It still has its own distinct look to it. It kind of reminds me of a BMW, but I think that's a good thing, and it says a lot. Because these bikes cost less than half, and yet they have almost the exact same features. Alright, so without further ado, let's now start with the details and maybe some negatives on this bike because I've only been saying positive and good things about it so far. So for the driver-centric controls, we have a awesome TFT display with this crisp animation. The display and graphics are also equally sharp and clean. I really like the minimalist layout. And if I'm not wrong, this has got to be the biggest screen I've ever used on a bike. We have your flasher and your high beam here and dual USBs on this side. And then up here, of course, it wouldn't be a CF Moto bike if it doesn't have cruise control. I feel like almost all CF Moto bikes come with cruise control. Especially on this one, you'll need it because you'll be traveling mostly long distances. But if I were to nitpick, I'd say that this button is really hard to press when you're on the go. So you have to put a lot of force when you push it on. But other than that, we have your menu toggle switches here, your back button, your OK or set button. You also have the horn. And you also have the left and right signal switch. So yeah, just like the other CF Moto bikes, this one had not so tactile buttons. I haven't gotten used to it yet, but I'm pretty sure you would if you owned this bike. Another thing that I didn't like about this, although they're self-canceling and the aux light flash in sync with the turn signals, is that you can barely see the indicator in the dash. I mean, the screen is so huge, but the signal icon is all the way here. They could have placed it on this blank space or here, and then it would have made a lot of difference. But that's just me nitpicking. Picking. Overall, the buttons are of premium quality as you'd expected from a half a million bike. The levers are also of good quality and as well as the side mirrors. I think this is only the second bike that I like the stock side mirrors. I probably won't change this anymore. They look great, they function great, so good job there CF Mono. And there's only two driving modes, which is rain and sport. It only changes the throttle response. And I feel like rain is just short for eco mode. And sport is where you want to keep it at whenever you want to ride this bike. But then again, having an eco mode in a sports mode would be more than enough for my needs. But that's just me. And then moving on to the right side, we have your hazard switch and your start and stop button. And of course, my favorite button out here is this LED switch. So it has three modes off, as in everything's off. It has DRLs and it also has the low beam here. The reason why I like this is because it gives you the option to turn off your DRLs and your low beam. Because most modern bikes nowadays doesn't come with an option to turn off your low beams and your DRLs. So this is perfect for photographers like me who want to accentuate the look of the headlights. 
So there you go, driver-centric controls overall are very simply laid out. Everything's right where they're supposed to. As for the build quality, almost everything here is plastic but of good quality of course. I mean, just take a look at this bike. It has got to be one of the best looking ADVs I've ever seen, at least in person. Especially with the DRLs on, this bike on looks alone will blow the other competition out of the water. Alright, so moving down here past the beak, we have dual fog lamps. This crash bar is an add-on because this bike is heavy, heavier than the 790 Adventure. Hence the reason why this bike is slightly more affordable than its counterpart. And speaking of counterpart, if I'm not mistaken, this looks like the exact same radiator that you'd find on the 790. It has almost the exact same pattern and size which makes sense because this engine will require the exact same cooling as the 790. So that's obviously a good thing. And then down here we have this very simple one-piece plastic and of course dual disc brakes by J. Juans. Stopping power is average, nothing special, does its job for the weight that it has. It's heavy, yes, but it's comparable to most ADVs in its class. Alright, so now let's move to the side. Obviously, we have this Motorex sticker, like what you'd see on most KTMs. And of course, the parallel twin engine with the CF Moto branding here. Also, you can definitely feel the heat coming off the engine through your shin. Nothing alarming in particular because most adventure bikes are like this, so that's okay. And if I'm not mistaken, the headers do look similar with the KTM placement. So you have your catalytic under here and your muffler tip over there. And if there's one thing that I liked about this bike's function is this extremely wide foot peg. You can literally stand on this bike for hours and you wouldn't feel any discomfort. This one had its rubber pegs taken out so it's less comfier. But nonetheless, I enjoyed standing on this foot peg on the highways and on the off-roads. But speaking of off-roads, we actually took this bike all the way to Lake Mapanuepe. So it's a freshwater lake in Zambales where the terrain is mostly sand and loose soil. And this bike handled it like a champ. We didn't drop it even though it had road tires on it. And I think it's partially because of the riding ergonomics on this bike. The seat is relatively low and it has this rough texture and memory foam inserts. So it makes your long rides more bearable. It also has an upright position while driving and adjustable rear and front suspensions. Sadly, this one isn't adjustable on the fly so you have to park and stop your bike to adjust it. I also have the same issue with the windscreen. Yes, it's adjustable. You can do it while riding. Maybe while you're on cruise control, it's not as easy as other bikes wherein you only have to twist and push a certain lever. For this one, you have to loosen both knobs and then pull the windshield up all the way, hold it, and then turn both knobs. I wish there was a simpler method for this to go up and down but then again that's just me asking too much for the price that this bike retails at. Alright so moving here at the back like I said the box and the panniers are add-ons for both variants and we also have a full aluminum swing arm here equally comfy foot pegs for the rear passenger and another set of J Juans for the rear brakes. And then all the way at the back we have a smoked LED tail light and of course full LED signal lights just like in the front. Fun fact guys, we actually shoot the promo photos for the 800MT launch here in the Philippines. So we took this bike all the way to Botalan in Zambales and it looked amazing of course. Alright, so now let's hop on the bike. As you can see, I'm well relaxed in my position here. The handlebars are also upright and comfortable. Obviously, it's punchy and torquey as well because it has the KTM DNA. I rode this bike all the way to Lake Mapanuepe in Zambales for about 4 hours on road and 1 hour off road and this bike handled it like a champ. You can definitely hear and feel the KTM engine kicking in. And it's not a bad thing. I know I've been mentioning the KTM engine a lot because they share the same engine with a slightly different tune. And I'm saying it's not a bad thing because KTM engines have been around for a very long time. They've been dominating the off-road ADV experience for a while now. And I think sharing an engine with CF Moto is probably one of the smartest moves they've done. Because instead of building an engine from scratch, they just partner up with the best and proven ADV off-road engine in the market. And I think that's a really smart move for CF Moto. I mean, you can't even go wrong with a KTM engine, right? So there's that. So I think that's pretty much it. I know a lot of you guys would ask, which one would I take? The 800 MT or the 790 Adventure? Obviously this one. On looks alone, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. 
performance wise i don't think there's much of a difference with the 790 sure it, maybe it's a little bit slower and less torqueier because of its weight and maybe tuning but then again i will never maximize and use the full potential of the 790 adventure so i'll take the 800 mt the touring version on the exact same color so yeah i'll take this over the 790 adventure any day I know you guys have been waiting for this review for a very long time now but if you want to see more updated photos and videos do follow me over at Instagram at Juanico Fernandez and at Fred underscore Rebs. So see you guys there and stay tuned for the next video.